Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. Welcome to the Center for Creative Living. And I'm the Reverend Dottie Boone. So glad to have you here. And uh, for those who are uh, on Zoom, I just received this beautiful bougainvillea from Deb, and I want to thank her so very much. What a beautiful donation. And I just found out from Reverend uh, Dr. Janet Childs that it can be planted outside. And uh, so that is great. I've got a good place on the in the front of my home to put it. And, and I love the color. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, while I'm making announcements, I want to tell you what happened last week with Michelle. Michelle is a cousin for Glenn Singer who died, and she was kind of stranded in Coos Bay in a hotel, and they, she had to be out by Monday at 1 o'clock. And when I said, would you please donate so we can help her have a, at least have a place to stay, because the house that she had been in, there was a fire and now there's no electricity, no water. So wow. she was just stranded and, and she just lost her cousin. So I, I got on the phone and I called and I told everybody about this. And last week, uh, our donations came to $865, Woo! which it was great. And that's from Zoom and everything. And thank you so much because what that did, it paid for over a week for her to stay in the hotel. Well, you negotiated the pants I, I negotiated, yeah, I didn't negotiate the pants off of it. I negotiated it, though. <laughs> it was $149 a night, and I got it down to 92 and so, uh, uh, you know, job, uh, one, once you're a buyer, you're always a good negotiator. So what happened, I was talking to the manager, and we had gone over the, all of this, and he gave us every discount he could. And uh, I said, you know, this lady is a hard worker, and she's looking for a job. He said, would she like to clean hotel rooms? And I said, I don't know. And he said, I'll ask her. So she got hired that day. Oh my God. <laughs> so now she's got a job, she's got a place to live. And then CCL, we donated the next week. So she's oh. there for two weeks. She's already ma making friends. She's uh, doing so much better than she was. And it's thank you, you guys did it. We were able to get her a place to live. We were able to get her a job. Uh, she just keeps texting me and saying, thank you, thank you. You guys are wonderful. Yay! And so I just want to thank you, Reverend Dottie. Oh, yeah. Well, the, I mean, everything is so great. Uh, we're going to be talking about laughter today. I think the world needs more laughter. I don't know how you do. So um, we're going to, uh, and any time uh, you think that um, life's not fun, you know, stop a minute and say, yes, it is. There's a lot of good things going on. Each one of you should have gotten a program, and on your program is two jokes. Now, I'm going to ask later for you to read one of them, whichever one you think is the funniest. And it's a very, you know, uh, I, I just don't care which one you think is the funniest. So, you know, it's going to be, you're going to choose. So everybody should have a program. And we're, we're going to start out this morning. <laughs> with a, a prayer and uh, anybody feel moved to do it? Hey Christine, since you're standing, you feel like starting with a prayer this morning? Here we go. Here we go. See, don't don't make any motion or I'll grab you. And this, uh, this is one of the, yeah, this is one of our ministerial students and this is her wonderful breakthrough prayer day. <laughs> Come on up and here we go. Can you get in behind there? Yeah. Take a deep breath in. And let it out. And come together recognizing and knowing that there is just one power, one life, one source, one absolute first cause, one God. And I know that God is all that there is. 
And I know that that power and that life that breathed life into me is inseparable from me, that I am one with God. And just as I know this to be the truth about each, about me, I know it to be the truth about each and every person here today. And I bless this day knowing that there are no accidents in this world, that there is a message for you somewhere, a reason for your being here. And I bless Reverend Dottie knowing that God speaks to us in many different ways. And I bless each and every person here today. So it is in great gratitude and thanks that I release my word into the action of the law, knowing that as I speak, that it is done. And so it is. So it is. So it is. Thank you. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> Oh, for somebody who wasn't expecting that and all she was doing was standing up to get a program, you did great. <laughs> so just just remember, this is this is your church. And you can you can say just about anything as long as it's positive. Okay. This is not a day for negative. This is a day for, for positive action. And when I say positive action, that doesn't mean you have to rush out and give away all your money and all your valuables and, and be crazy. It means start smiling more. I'm going to smile at Mary. Good morning, Mary. <laughs> and just start smiling. And we have somebody new here, Chad. So yeah, Chad. smile at Chad and yeah. say good morning. Yeah. 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 And uh, know that a smile is one of the greatest things that you can do. And I had somebody say to me, I can't smile, my teeth aren't great. I don't care. I have a lot of people that are, I know, they're from Great Britain who they don't quite have the dentistry there, I, I think, but their, their smile isn't beautiful, but it's, you can feel it, it's heartfelt. So we want you to know that just looking at somebody in their eyes and smiling means so much to them. It might be the only smile they get all day, okay? So we're going to have a wonderful guided meditation, and if uh, our Reverend uh, Jan could come up here, we'd really appreciate it. Mary was trying to whisper something. That's okay. <laughs> do you want to uh, say it to... You should do the birthday, too, this week. Okay, I will. So someone has one. Oh, oh, well, that's let's great. Do that right now. That's really do it. So, who yes. has a, a birthday this week? Yay! 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 Woo! Come on up and get your Come beads. Yay! 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 What a surprise! Yay! <laughs> well, Mary, I, I I am so delighted. And do you want gold or red or blue or what kind of beads? Oh, okay, purple. Purple. Yes. Are you ready? Girl. Are you ready? Here we go. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Yay! Yay! Happy, happy birthday. Anybody else? Christine, how was your birthday week last week? It was great. Good, good. Thank you so much. Birthdays are so important. This is one day that's just, just for you. You were youth <laughs> for you. Thank you. And I'm so glad Quirky is feeling better. Yay! Yay! She was teasing and being her usual on herself this morning, so it was great. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, so, uh, dancing, coming in, dancing. You were you were dancing. Yes. Yeah, remember that one? Yeah, Everybody I remember. Line? Uh, <laughs> you were a single member in a conga line. Okay, I that's that's that. That was doing great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Reverend Dottie. Yes. Do you know that what's who is going to be on our speaker series? Oh, next we, week, not Ronnie, this week, but Ronnie. next week. Ronnie, Ronnie, Reverend Ronnie, Reverend Grigsby. Ronnie Grigsby, and he's going to speak about the spirit of the African American church. Yay! Well, I invite you to really. He, I am so excited about what he's doing, and we're going to have some wonderful discussion about it and how we can take some of those qualities, you know, from the African American church. And you know, infuse it in our daily spirituality. So please, please join us. It's the second Tuesday in April, 
and it's from six to eight pm and just go to the u c m website u dash c dash m dot org and it'll be right on the front and the the other thing we have to announce is uh Joan Stoops. Joan, you want to stand up for a minute yes, and yes. tell us a little bit about beginning of astrological growth for spirituality. What does that all mean? What is that? Well, that's not a mystery. It's fairly obvious that uh, astrology is, you know, impacting us all day, every day. And so we'll be talking about that in a general way, not, not specific. But I'm excited about that, and I've also looked up the birth date of all the presidents in the United States and discovered their sun sign. So we'll be talking about the presidents and their sun sign, as well as briefly about you and your sunshine. So I think it's going to be interesting for you. I'm trying to make it interesting. You are not going to learn how to cast a chart you are not going to learn how uh, Mars is square Jupiter. I'm Thank sorry, God. but you're going to learn. <laughs> you know, you're going to learn something that I hope is interesting. While I'm up here, I also want to remind you that I'm doing uh, how to tell your story. Tell your story so that you can develop your 20-minute talk, which is a requirement for the ministerial studies. And if, if you want to do that, I've been doing it Friday night on Zoom. We get together and talk about some ideas and how to put them together into a talk. And it, it's a lot of fun. And everyone has a story to tell. And so what I do is help you knit those stories together so it becomes a, a nice talk. Anyway, if, if you want to join in, I invite you. I just love to help people learn how to speak in public because most of us have a, a, a the surveys say <clears throat> that most people would rather die than speak in public and I don't want you to be in that position I want you to have a new belief I love telling my story Good. Yay. 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 Uh, that's on, and that's Thursday night, and that's at UCM, and it's at seven o'clock. It's a, it's on the back of your program. If you've got a program, it gives you the information about it. Okay, and uh, thank you, Reverend uh, Joyce Brown and Patty just walked in, and Re 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 Reverend Mel Bentoncourt and Patty just came in. So uh, thank you so much, folks. A lot of activity going well, on in the back there. of the room now. And Reverend Maria. Yeah. And, and where's, where's Maria? Yeah, she is. I thought she was. Oh, I must be seeing things. Well, I invoke her energy. Yeah, and everybody should have a program of, because we've got jokes on the program and we want you to be able to in, enjoy some fun today. But now, are you ready? If you're ready to just uh, put your feet flat on the floor. Take a deep breath and close your eyes. And as you follow the sound of my voice, I want you to realize that each one of you, being a child of the Mother, Father, God, came in with a sense of humor and came in with a sense of music you might not be the world's greatest singer or the greatest dancer, but still music plays a big part in your life. And as you listen to our wonderful Janet, realize that there's that chord within you that vibrates to the gu guitar, to the voice. And each time you breathe, Bring in music, but also bring in laughter. Because each one of you, the first thing you learned to do before you spoke was laugh. You've been laughing since you were a tiny baby. And that laughter 
is what is the most important thing in life for you right now today. It opens you up. Just feel that laughter bubbling up inside you and know you're going to hold on to it all day. And as you relax into this day by lowering your shoulders down, let go of the tension. So breathe in a life fulfilling, fun, glorious breath of air. Breathe it in. And then when you release it, Oh, let go of all that isn't. All that isn't fun, glorious, and exciting, release it. Let's do that again. Breathe in. Breathe in love and laughter. Oh, all the tension, all the frustration leaves you. One more deep breath. Breathe it in. Joy and laughter. And exhale. Anything that isn't exciting, interesting, and fun. And as you feel your breath cursing through your body, know that you are in charge. It's not about what is happening politically. It's not about what's happening atmospherically. Your body is your temple of joy. So all day today, let's have fun and realize that each step you take, each breath you take, you can change your attitude, your energy, and your outlook. Now keep your eyes closed as we listen to whatever energy our wonderful, wonderful Reverend Janet is going to do with this meditation.
the underground river of my love and the sparkling fog and I know this moment inside is real and it grows so dance, dance, dance dream, dream, dream and let the joy flow it is here in every breath it's seen in every <coughs> smile and it feels what we know it can transform every moment it can bring forth deep breath and come back to the room. Thank you so much, Anna. That was beautiful. When you started saying dance, 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 I felt like I wanted to do it. You just yes. jump up and dance, dance, dance. Sounds great to me. That would be great. That was so great. Thank you so much. It's okay. You can applaud. You can applaud meditation. Yay! 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 Go ahead and do that. Yay! The fool. And the fool is the, the being that people laughed at, people or would uh, tease about and yet what the fool did is it lightened everything it made everything easier to look at and life became easier when you could laugh at somebody else and i don't know if you're the one of those people that likes to watch uh comedies when there's laughter when there's fun so uh when, when i was talking about ways that we can change our energy and sometimes it's just by laughing, just finding a way to laugh. But th we find that when people are going through a rough time, it's hard to. It's hard for John to right now laugh. Mm -hmm. It's hard for Chad to laugh. It's hard for, you know, we get it caught up in the negative. And if you stop and say, hey, you know, nobody was hurt. 
but feelings when they get hurt sometimes can hurt more than actually your body physically being hurt so that's why when you see somebody going through something that is spiritually hurtful emotionally hurtful physically find a way to help lighten it and just being there listening but sometimes giving them something fun in other words you can become the fool to help somebody else so when you think about that you can do something a little bit foolish or tell some lighten it up by something but that's not your job it's your joy to be able to help somebody who's going through a difficult time and this is something that our Reverend Janet does she is so good at <laughs> helping people that are going through difficulty and thank you so much for doing that so when I was talking about being foolish celebrating April Fool's Day a day late is really foolish uh, it, it's like oh okay but I wanted to do this because I like the idea of laughter and I like the things that we can laugh at but you know so many people don't realize that laughter is one of the best stress relievers there is that's why we watch comedies that's why we uh, that's why we read things that are funny that's why we make jokes and so when you think about that start looking at what a serious thing laughter really is <laughs> and what I talked about in the meditation of babies laughing before they say anything we start laughing in fact they were looking at how well, did language develop and they realized that when we were just emerging as a species that we were laughing before we were talking before there was words that we could use to communicate so laughter is one of the oldest ways to communicate there is and it's it's wired into our evolution so when you see somebody laughing don't think well that's silly or that's stupid that means they're evolving laughter is how we evolved and when I talk about the laughter of children children laugh 200 to 300 times a day oh, wow. adults are lucky if they laugh 10 times a day wow. so when you think about that realize that as we're emerging and as we're growing laughter is one of the best things we can do and look at look just look at things that you can laugh at there's so many things every day instead of worrying start laughing because laughter is exercise isn't that interesting when you laugh what do you think it does to your internal organs kind of jiggles them around and gets them more excited about life doesn't it so laughter does that something that's so great it, it, it found that it takes 10 minutes on a rowing machine to equal the exercise you get from laughter. And wow. that's something. Yeah, so if you want to do exercise, start watching comedies. Start looking at laughter. Right, right. Out with the rowing machine, on with laughter. And, uh, and the same level is provided by any kind of belly laugh. Uh, so to stay healthy, watch something that makes you laugh I don't know uh, for me I like old reruns of I Love Lucy and one of my favorite right now is the Vicar of Dibley which is really an old old thing and I love that vicar I just have to I just have to laugh I mean she gets herself into so many different situations <laughs> laughter also stimulates that good brain chemical mm -hmm. okay what do you think uh, being depressed does it's the bad chemical so start looking at what is the good brain chemical that you want to release and do it because it helps remove cancer cells mm -hmm. they found that with people laugh the cancer cells uh, here comes Chad and I gave away his chair okay and it's the it's, it's no coincidence that people like Betty White Bob Hope George Burns Look how long they lived. They all lived to a hundred. Huh? Why? Because of laughter. The comedians are amazing when you watch them. They bring that laughter in that helps you move forward and helps you grow. And you know, it seems like during my life I was constantly doing something foolish or having foolish things happen. 
And these are the basis for my spiritual growth. For the person I became, it's because of the silly things that happened to me. And so I'm going to tell you some of the stories and uh, because I feel that laughter is good for the soul. And so anytime I can get somebody to laugh, I feel they're moving spiritually forward because it enhances your mental health, not just your physical, not just your spiritual. It improves your mood, it relieves tension, and it relieves feelings of anger and frustration. And so think of that. Laughter is addictive to the brain. Have you ever stayed around Corky for a bit and you're playing yourself laughing? She's addictive. She's addictive. She's addictive because she laughs. And so <laughs> she gets people laughing. And it's so fun to be around somebody that helps you laugh. You know, and so when you think about that. So it in it laughter so it does all these wonderful things, physical, medical men physical, mental, and spiritual. And it inspires hope and adds joy to our life. And it makes us aware that we're in the presence of the divine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think of my creator as being mean, nasty, and bad. I think of a lightness and an energy and joy. So when you think about that, when you're in the presence of the creator, appreciate the joy of being alive on the planet. Just appreciate being alive today. Think about it. Have you laughed today? Yeah. We're going to have you laugh some more. That's just what we do. So each one of you got some jokes. We're going to ask for those later. And do you know that laughter, along with a sense of humor, is the best stress releaser around? It relieves it, and when it's shared, it brings people closer together and increases everybody's mood. So we're going to try, we're try doing that. And as I mentioned, one of my oldest memories, I was six, was when I went to first grade. And I was so excited. I got to go on a big yellow school bus to school. I was so excited about going to school. And I came home from school and I said to my mom, Mom, I got to meet these people. It was so fun. And I got to go on the bars. And my mom said, you went on the bars? I said, yeah. And you know, you can turn upside down and just like turn yourself inside out on the bars. And my mom said, well, Daddy, I, I don't think you should do that. And I said, why? And she said, well, the boys can see your underwear. And I thought about that. You can imagine a little six-year-old thinking about that. So the next day I came home from school and said, Mom, if you put one leg over the bar and you go forward and it's called a shooting star and you go faster and faster. And she said, Dottie, what did I say? And so I said, oh, Mom, it's okay. I took off my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> right then she decided life might be a little more difficult than she thought. <laughs> and so my mom, instead of making me wrong, just made me shorts and match every outfit I had. <laughs> you know, and, and then she, she, she said, it's okay to go on the bars now, you know, you're whatever. And, and it, was, it was great. And so, but this doing things out of what people usually do is what made my life very, very interesting. When I was in uh, Japan, I went up to see the living Buddha. Now, the living Buddha was a Buddha that was carved in a tree. And as the tree grew, the Buddha did too. And it got bigger and taller. But as you can imagine, they had an a, a enclosure so it didn't have a lot of rain because they had little places where they sold things around the living Buddha. But that sh little shack around it didn't grow with the tree, so it was kind of slanted. But you got to go in and you got to see the Buddha and there were people there praying and selling things. And so I was really excited about going in and seeing and touching because it's a real shrine. And so I was, but I had been walking through the snow so my feet were a little slippery. So when I got up there, I got all the way up there and put my foot down on the floor and I started sliding. Oh, wow. And I was sliding straight for the Buddha. Yay, Buddha! There I am, all, you know, uh, 200 pounds of me, 
and, um, uh, and all these very tiny Japanese people looking at me in horror as I'm sliding to her, towards their national shrine, you know. And the people that had tables that were selling things were quickly gathering it <laughs> as I was sliding. And I was picking up speed and nothing was slowing me down. Well, a, a young lady that was traveling in the bus that had taken us up grabbed me with my, my hand. Well, what it did, we started playing Crack the Whip, and I was going around in a circle. And she didn't know what to do with me at the end, and so she let go, and I ran into the wall. Oh, well, the wall was made out of very light construction, and it shook the whole building when I hit it, because I hit one of the uprights, and so the wall started shaking. And I looked around, and nobody said anything. Their eyes were so big, and I very cautiously took my shoes off so I could walk out, and I walked out, not a word, and the minute I closed the door, the place broke up in laughter. <laughs> and a lot of words that sounded like stupid America. <laughs> and so that was my entry to Japan, and that it was kind of like the way I went through the, the, the Asian communities, because when I was in Tokyo, I, I don't speak Japanese, and I, I was hungry. My, husband was doing a conference there and I was on my own and I don't know if you've been to Japan but they have plastic food yes. outside in a little little case so you can look at what the food looks like right. which I think is a wonderful way to display a menu and I saw something I really liked so I walked in and I sat down at the counter and there was a very elderly gentleman sitting there and he was eating exactly what I'd seen that I liked so when the server came up, the waitress came up, I pointed, and she nodded. She went and got it, and he's sitting there, very stoically eating, and, he, and then he, there was a little tray with uh, different things you could add to your meal, and so he'd take it with his chopsticks, and I thought, that looks good. So I started doing the same thing, and they took the lid off of one and took it, and I did the same thing. That was the hottest spice I've ever had. I coughed and sneezed and snorted and blew water through my nose. It was so hot. Whoa. And he didn't say a word, but he was popping up, tight, up and down. He was laughing internally, which said to me a lot about the Japanese, you know. He was very, very, and he was just laughing. I got to laughing too, and that didn't help. And I left thinking, well, now so, so far I've gotten the people around the living Buddha and the people in Tokyo. And uh, that's, that's the way Dottie is. She's making joy and happiness wherever she goes. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, but uh, when I was in China, I didn't realize that big women didn't travel that much because this has been 45 years ago. And I had on a heel, and I always wear wigs. We'll talk about wigs later. So here I had my wig. I'm not about six feet tall at that point, and I'm walking down the street, and this little boy came running up and looked at me, and he just touched me, you know. And he smiled, and I smiled, and pretty soon his older brother came in, and he touched me, and he smiled, and I smiled. And then he left, and then his mother came over, and she touched me, and I'm still walking. And I look, and they're all following me. By the time I got to the end of the street, I had 25 people. I started <laughs> a parade, and they were all so thrilled to be able to come up and touch this blonde big woman and, and I looked around and big women weren't traveling that much but I, I so so now I, I had done that in Japan I'd in, introduced myself to people and now I was doing it in China so that was kind of interesting of you know, going all that but all the time that I was doing this my wig was on see I've been wearing wigs since I was about 18, 19, because I lost all my hair in my teenage years. And so, I, and I had crazy wigs. I, I don't know if Joyce and Corky remember, because I've known them the longest here, but I had an Afro wig that was about this high, right blonde. <laughs> it, it made an impression. And so, uh, wherever I went, something seemed to happen to my wig. And one of them was I went into the... Superior Court in Los Angeles. Oh no. And I had gotten out of the car and I'm walking down the street and my wig flew off. <laughs> <laughs> well
Well, I had a purse in one hand and a briefcase in the other because I was there to file some documents. And I couldn't chase it because I didn't have any hand to pick it up. And I turned around and here was this fully uniformed cop chasing my wig down the street. <laughs> and he caught it and he put his hand up to show me and it blew out of his hand. And, he had it chasing. and so he's chasing it and I'm looking at him, I turn around and the guard at the door is just cracking up. <laughs> and he said, I am gonna have to tease Sergeant Jordan's about that one, you know. I saw you chasing somebody's hair down the street. <laughs> And so, but this cop was so embarrassed that when he came to the guard, he handed him my wig. Now the guard <laughs> looked at me like, oh, what do I do with this? You know? So he handed it back and I put it under my arm. So now I'm walking into the courthouse with one hairy armpit. And uh, so when I got to the county clerk and, uh, and she's looking at me and I'm looking at her and she said, I'm sorry, you're going to have to come back. These are not the correct papers. You have to have something else here. And I said, I'll see you tomorrow. She said, I'll be waiting. And I, <laughs> when I walked out and I said to the guard, I said, well, thank you very much. And he said, okay. So the next day I go back. Now I have a scarf. My <laughs> wig is tied on. And I walk up and the guard said, excuse me, what's your name? And I said, Dottie. And he said, Dottie, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> I said, uh, well, I've got to get back to Lancaster. And he said, oh, darn, my kids would love to meet you. He said, <laughs> he said, I told them all about the woman with the wig and the chase and the cop. And, and they said, can she come to dinner, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, we'll have to make it some other time. But that losing my wig, the one in, uh, when I was in, uh, had gone to work. And after, after work, I decided to go to Safeway and I took off my wig and put it in the back seat. And my uh, younger sister, Sierra, was with me. And we went in and shopped and my, you know, my hair is very sparse, but I could just, uh, you know, very nicely brush it back. And so we came out and she's flirting with the guy, the kid who's carrying the groceries. And, and he come to find out she, he was going to college and she knew him. And, but that flirting, oh, hi, oh, hi, how are you? Fine. Oh, I didn't know you worked at Safeway. And I have nothing. It. And he's talking. She opens the door. He throws the groceries in and he goes, ah! I said, what happened? He said, I think I killed your dog. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, a big bag of potatoes is sitting on my wig. And all you can see is a little bit of her hair just sticking up underneath. And I said, I said, no, you didn't kill my dog, but you really wrecked my wig. And <laughs> Sierra was very upset. I had ruined her whole dating chance, she was sure. And uh, the other one was, we went to see Bette Midler in uh, San Francisco. And, and it was great, great show, and I'm walking out. And this, have you ever met uh, uh, some guy that you just could tell he's gay because, you know, he's just got that energy, and he was kind of, ha, da, da. And he walked by and he looked at my wig and he said, I love your hair, darling. And I said, oh, and I took it off and gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> you have never seen anybody slip off the sidewalk in utter humiliation as he's wondering what to do with this wig, you know? And, uh, and my, the, uh, the woman I was with at the time just cracked up, said, Donnie, how did you do that? I said, I just thought he needed a little comeuppance, you know? <laughs> he likes my hair, he can have it. And so, uh, but uh, uh, one of the things that I found, maybe because I'm outgoing and I talk to anybody, when I was in New Orleans, I was standing on the street corner because Corky and our friend Dr. Jan were wandering through New Orleans, and it was Mardi Gras. Mm. And I don't know how many of you know about beads and Mardi Gras. If you show parts of your anatomy, you get beads. And the, and the more you show, the more beads you get, and the longer beads you get. And I'm standing there leaning against a lamppost, and this very nice man walks up to me. He said, hi, are you a visitor? And I said, yeah. He said, do you really like New Orleans? And I said, oh, I love it. It's great. He said, oh, fine. And he took off this long strand of beads and put it over my head. And he kissed me on the cheek. And he said, he, he just gently kissed me and said, you have a nice day. So when Corky comes back, she looks at me with this long strand of beads and said, what have you been doing? <laughs> We were only gone for 15 minutes, and you look at what you did. And, uh, uh, 
<laughs> uh, when I was in, the, in college, I, uh, both my uh, husband and I were going to college in L.A., and we went into an Akron store. How many of you remember Akron stores? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it sold lots of things that were imported and different things, and it was a nice store. And so he, he and I walked into Akron's, and I'm standing there, and Sandra D walked in the door. Now, I don't know if many of you know who Sandra D yeah. is. Yeah. Cute, cute lady. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching her. And it, that's not unusual in Hollywood to see stars and just out like normal people. But it just impressed me. She just looks so, so young and cute, and she's walking, and I go, there's Sandra D. And I punched her. And I said, Sam, Sam, there's Sandra D. He didn't say a word. So I punched him again. There, there she goes. See, there's Sandra D. Nothing. Well, I was going to get his attention. I stomped on his foot. I said, Sam, there's Sandra D. And his voice says, I know. And I turned around and looked in the eyes of Bobby Darren. <laughs> I had punched, slapped, and stepped on his foot. <laughs> And he was not too happy about any of it, and uh, he said, uh, for those of you who don't know, that was her husband at the time, was Bobby. <laughs> so every time I hear splish splash, I'm taking a bath, yeah, and I punched him too. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that happened, uh, my wig kind of played into it, we went to the Gay Pride uh, Parade up in San Francisco. How long ago was that, Corky? 35 years ago or so. Yeah. And I was wearing a very gauzy pink dress. And and I had my wig on. Oh, and God. I'm walking down the, or down the street walking and down the street. walking down the street. I'm up my purse in my hand. And a big draft of wind came. Well, I was afraid I was going to lose my wig. So I grabbed my head, but my dress went straight up over my head. <laughs> Just whoosh. And I'm, you know, thank God I had underwear on that day. Uh, and, uh, so I, I just am trying to get my dress down and add a little bit of decorum. We were heading for a party, and by the time we got to the party, they knew about Dottie and her dress. And I was greeted with applause. They thought it was pretty neat. So I told this story at CCL a few years ago, and David, one of the singers in our choir, had been sitting at that corner of Noe and Market oh at the God. cafe floor and saw me when that happened. Oh. And he said, I, I know, I was there, I saw it. <laughs> so there again, there I was doing something pretty exciting and interesting that my, my wig got me in trouble. <laughs> there are so many different things that I have done in my life that were funny and yet, I never thought that people were laughing at me. Mm -hmm. I always felt people were laughing with me, mm -hmm. because I've never really taken myself that seriously, that it's going to be, oh my gosh. <clears throat> and so what I want you to do, to think about that, yeah. how many of you can live your life not taking you to yourself too seriously? Mm -hmm. And it's fun to do it. Yeah, it is fun. Yeah. Now, each one of you got some jokes, and you should have gotten two little slips, so just take a moment, and they're on your program, look at them, and I want you to read the one you think is the funniest. Okay. So stand up and give us your name, and what's his joke? Hi, I'm Courtney, and it says, adults are always asking children what they want to be when they grow up, because they're looking for ideas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Oh, okay, Joyce. I'm Joyce. Oh, sorry. I am Joyce C. Brown. Thank you. <clears throat> it's my belief we develop language because of our deep inner need to complain. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Tomlin. Lily Tomlin. Oh, okay, yes. Patty. I think that was fun. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Patty Baker. Doing nothing is hard. You never know when you are done. Steve Martin. <laughs> uh, you say Steve Martin? Uh-huh. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's a good one. Sometimes, oh, I'm Joan. Hi, Joan. Hey, Joan. Sometimes the road less traveled is less, is 
Less traveled for a reason. Right. <laughs> Let's see who said that. Who said that? Oh, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. Hey, Jerry. Okay, there we go. A good. I, I'm Christine. Hi, Christine. A good rule to remember for life is that when it comes to plastic surgery and sushi. Never be attracted by a bargain. <laughs> Graham Norton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, when, I'm Janet. Oh, go oh, ahead. Yeah. When Mick Jagger insisted that his wrinkles were actually laugh lines, jazz singer George Melly replied, surely nothing could be that funny. <laughs> between fiction and reality? Fiction has to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> who, who said that? Tom Clancy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got, uh-oh, I just dropped that one. Sorry, Joyce. Hey. <laughs> okay, there, okay, I've got one that really is touching and I've got another one that's funny, so, but I want to- so Sure, I, go, I'm Mary. Going. Okay. Go for it, Mary. People say nothing is impossible. But I do nothing every day. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, and, yeah. and this one I kind of. People may hate you for being different and not living by today's standards, but deep down they wish they had the courage to do the same. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who yes. yes. wrote that, Mary? Um, that was Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Hart. Kevin Hart. Hart. Yes. I'm Chad. So I know this only because I know this, and I want you to picture this. Linus is talking to Charlie Brown, okay? Uh -huh. And the quote is, don't worry about the world coming to an end today. It's already tomorrow in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? It's Charles Schultz, but I know the cartoon, and that's why I remember Linus and Charlie having that talk. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a goodie. <laughs> yep, Christy? Hi, I'm Christine. Uh, normal is nothing more than a site on a washing machine. Thank you, Goldberg. I'm passing because I don't know where this is. You didn't get one of these tricky. No. Really? Oh, okay. Oh. You know, I gotta find classes. <laughs> so you can move to the next person. I'll okay. come back later. Go ahead. I shall read this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dara. Um, friends, I've got a way of apologizing to us for our offense. Anonymous. Oh, One more time, what does it say? Okay. Friends, I've got a way of apo apologizing to us for our family. Oh. <laughs> Anonymous. Okay, she's like, Sorry, here. Okay, I guess I can read one now. Go okay. Ahead. There's nothing so annoying as to have two people go right on talking when you're interrupted. Okay, Dwayne. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I'm not offended by blonde jokes because I know I'm not or yeah, I know I'm not dumb, and also I know that I'm not blonde. Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I have, I think it's a laugh loudly, laughed off, laugh often, and most importantly. Laugh at yourself. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's nice. That's a winner. Uh, this one's from Lily Conlon. Uh, the trouble with the rat race is even if you win, you're still a rat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Tim, did you have one? Uh, oh, okay. Go. Yeah, I'm Kevin. Uh, before you criticize someone, you should walk a mile in their shoes. That way, when you criticize them, you're a mile away, and you have their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jo Jack Handy. No clue. I'm Donna. The man who says his wife can't take a joke forgets that she took him. <laughs> 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 
Oscar Wilde, yes. Did you want to read it? Do you have smoking pills? If you're killed, you lost it. You lost a very important part of your life. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. This is from Mel Brooks, so I'll do my best. Mel Brooks. As long as the world is turning and spinning, we're going to be dizzy. And we're going to make mistakes. Oh, <laughs> that's, yeah, good. Yeah. that's incredible. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, so this is from Marilyn Monroe. If you're going to be two-faced, at least make one of them pretty. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, I might be the last one, but hi, my name is Amanda. It's my second time here. Yay, hi, Amanda. Amanda. Um, Okay, if I ever have a daughter, I'm gonna name her Taken. That way, when a guy asks for her name, she can say, I'm Taken. Chris Rock, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Valerie, did you get a chance to? Yeah, read? I got one. Okay, did you read it? And I missed yeah, it? Yeah, I did. She did. Well, yeah, she see did. what happens? <laughs> Thank you so oh, very much. Wonderful. Isn't that fun? Uh, Isn't it fun to laugh? Did yes. you find some something at least a little bit funny that you could laugh at? Yeah. Uh, I missed you, Ed. Did, did you get one? I did not. Oh my you goodness. You want me to get you one? Yeah. Yeah. He's got that, that, he's looking at you kind of with a, a you side go. eye here. <laughs> go, Ed. Go, Ed. Come on, Ed. It, this one is from Dorinda Jones. I'm going to do this right. Okay, here we go. Yes. He's going to do it right. Do it right. Okay. For you Zoomers, this is from Dorinda Jones. <laughs> Life isn't a fairy tale. If you lose a shoe at midnight, you're drunk. <laughs> get a chance to look at and see what Ed looks like. Yeah, I mean, uh, that is that is reveal. great. Who do we have on Zoom, Ed? Uh, Jen Lee, Chris Brown, iPhone 11, which is me, Jean, Laura, Maria, Milan, Sherry, Sky, and Zoom user. Okay, uh, welcome Zoomers. We're so glad we're so glad to have you here. This has been a, a wonderful day. Thank you so much. And at this uh, point in time, we pass the basket. Yay. And uh, here, there you go, Mary. Yay, Yay Mary. Yay, Mary. And if you want it, maybe you could have some. Well, I think Mary's going to do a great job of doing it all by herself. What do you yeah, think? I can do it. Yay, Mary. Yeah. Good, good, Mary good. Well, I'm. Uh, oh, we need to say the thing. Yes, and what we say at this point, and it's on the back of your program. And it's giving to the ministry from which I receive my spiritual support and nurturing is an affirmation in consciousness of the truth that spirit is a prospering power enriching every area of my life. And we thank you. And while we're passing the basket, please put prayers out for our wonderful Dr. Eileen. Uh, she's got a really bad cold. And uh, she's at home, and I, I want her to know that we're sending out prayers Absolutely. and hope because she's going to be speaking on Easter Sunday. Please come next Sunday. I, you're going to get when you come. You're going to get an Easter egg full out of full of goodies really? and candy, it's a, candy, 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 candy. If I can get, stop eating it and putting it in your Easter eggs, <laughs> you're going to get a lot of candy. And it's going to be fun to do that. One of the things that I found when I talk about laughing at myself, I was working for Edwards Air Force Base, and I was in purchasing. And I accidentally ordered 500 parachutes instead of 50 that I was supposed uh -oh. to. What's a what's a zero? What's an extra zero? <laughs> and we got them from Tinker Air Force Base, and they wouldn't take them back. They wow. said, "You ordered them, you've got them." It was right at a time when they were doing away with that type of a parachute, and they were glad to get rid of it. And so I was so upset, and I apologized to my captain and said, I, 
I, I don't know what happened. I didn't mean to do that. And he said, Dottie, don't worry. Everybody who wants one is getting a parachute. And I thought, well, what do you do with a parachute? And I went out that afternoon when I left work, and we're in the desert. And all the parked cars had a parachute over them to protect them from the sun. Oh. And so it was like, yay! My, you know, it's incredible. So, yeah, and so my, my mom made blouses for me out of it. <laughs> Not many people, you know, are 18 to get their own parachute. <laughs> And you so, can use them for decoration. You can use it for I just mean, about parachutes anything. are amazing. Yeah, and I, I want to say, you know, my life, I'm so glad, has always been full of excitement, interest, new and different things, but always knowing that people aren't laughing as much at me. They're laughing at the reason they feel is important. Mm. And that's that I'm laughing at myself mm. because I, I am a funny person and I appreciate that. You know, as, as many of you know, I did comedy in San Francisco for six months and I was taking a class. And uh, for, so for six months, and uh, every week I was on some stage doing comedy. Mm. I wasn't great, I wasn't bad, I was mediocre. And I thought, mediocre just doesn't do it. So I had to give up my, who knows where I would have been now. Uh, um, I think you're great. Right? Oh, well, Yay! Thank you. Yay! But it was fun. So please, let's see you next Sunday. Uh, thank you again for uh, uh, Joyce and Patty and the people who came in a little bit later. Mary? Uh, or oh, Kevin and Donna. Kevin and Donna. Well, uh, when I, I talked about what was going on with Michelle, and that we raised over $800 uh, last week for Michelle. She's got a place to stay. She's got a job. She's doing very well. But we couldn't have done it without all your help. Yeah. Thank you, you so much. Yeah. All right. Very good. And uh, this coming yeah, yeah. Thursday is Joan Stutz is talking. What? Lunch. Lunch. Lunch after. Oh, okay. Uh, well, if you're interested in joining us for lunch, I'm going to call and see if we can go to the... When I called this morning, nobody answered the phone. <laughs> that, uh, they must have been really busy. But I'm going to call and see where we can find a place to go to lunch if you'd like to join us. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go again. Thank you. It's so good to have Corky back. <laughs> Thank you. And so I'll call and see where I can find. We went to the IHOP last week, talked to the manager. And he said, when you bring a big group, ask for him. And if we pay cash, we don't have to worry about the, the bill. Because it was that you couldn't get more than two people paying with a credit card. And we had uh, 10 people last week, and it was hard. And uh, we, we thought, well, we don't want to do this. And I told it to him. It so us 30 it, minutes to calculate everybody's bill on yeah. the big bill. Yeah, so uh, he said, let's talk to him. So I'm going to call the bowling alley, and then I'm going to call IHOP. So please uh, have a cup of coffee, tell each other some jokes, and I'll be right back with you and tell you where we're going for lunch, okay? Thank you very much. Yay! Yay! Thank you.